Okay. We are now Chodesh Tov Kuf Chet Amud Bet 108B near the top of the page by the two dots about 10 lines down 13 lines down thank you by the parentheses Azin Tzinon Vetrog Siman These are going to be uh, several bright thoughts which are coming Tanir Rabbi Yehuda Bechavivo you can't make very strong salt water on Shabbat. My melech hazin, what is it? Any thing that is so salty that the egg will float on it. So that means. So therefore, you're not allowed, according to Rabbi Rabbi to make very very thick salt water. Because you may come to pickle things on Shabbat. Whose opinion is that in the Mishnah? That's a Tanakama. Because according to Rabbi Yossi, what did Rabbi Yossi say? A small amount of May Malach is also also, um, even if it's not very strong. There's no difference, he said, whether it's a large amount or a small amount. That's what Rabbi Yossi said. And the Gemara said yesterday that Rabbi Yossi is saying it which way? L'chumra. That both of them are sur. Okay, the camel. How much salt do you need to be able to make a uh, egg float? I'm going to buy a tray tilti milcha, the tilti maya. Two thirds salt, one third water. The maya of delay. Why would a person make that? For what do they make that for? I'm going to buy the murista. When you make fish brine, so that's what you use. Tony Rabbi Huda Bechavivo, Ein Moichin Tznoinu Beitzav Shabbos. You're not allowed to salt tsinoin, radish, ubeitza, bishabis, or an egg on Shabbos. But Rav Chizki Mishmeda Bayom are tsinoin also ubeitza muteres. Tsinoin is asur, but the salt doesn't really make the beitza better. <coughs> it makes the, the, the radish better. But we'll make it harder. It's right. Amar Rav Nachman, Meresh have Malach the Puglo. Rav Nachman said, first I used to salt radishes. I mean, I've stood the coma I said it's, it's probably ruining it. The Amar Shmuel Puglo Churfi Meali, because Shmuel taught that a Puglo Churfi, a sharp radish, is very good for you. But one that once you put the salt in and the, all the, the the sharpness is reduced. It's not so good. Once I heard Ula come from Eretz Yisrael, from Eretz Yisrael to, to Bavel, and he said that in the West in Eretz Yisrael, Molchi Kishri Kishri, they put loads of salt on top of radishes, which means that putting radishes on top of them is good for it. So, Mimlechli Malachno, Tabuli Vadi Matpilo. So, I don't salt them. I don't sit, I don't uh, put salt directly on top of them. But, Tabuli Vadi Matpilo. But I do um, dip them in. Tony Rav Yehuda Bachaviva. Because that's not the Isra of salting. It's not doyme in any way to uh, tanning the hides. If you just dip it in. Having it in already emerged and salt before, that wouldn't be a problem? They're saying, Imam, it's on Shabbat. On Shabbat, yeah. Before it's not a problem, right. Tony Rabbi Yehuda Bechavivo, Etrog Tznonu Beitza, Il Malik Lipatan Achitona, these three things, an Etrog, a radish, and a Beitza. If not for the three Klipa, the outer peel, Einan Yotzim Ibn Me'ayin Le'olam. They would never leave the stomach. Okay? Now, over here it doesn't really mean the, the peel of the egg, right? Because, obviously not eating the peel of the egg. But the point is that the, the, the white part of the egg, that's what it means. So the inside parts of these three things are very hard, and they wouldn't be able to leave your, the, the whole tract, the digestive tract. But because of the outside part, they're able to leave. 
That's what he says. Very strong. St- okay, fine. Um, some learn just the opposite. Some learn that the inside of the egg is so digestible <laughs> that it just goes, it just gets digested right away, and it never is, uh, it never has to go through the, the through the stomach and leave the person, unless there was the white. Okay, ki atur avdimi amar. A person never ever drowned and sank to the bottom of the Yamamelach, to the sea of the storm, because it's so salty. If Yosef says, storm was turned upside down, and therefore Rav Dimi, when he spoke about storm, that sentence also should be turned around. Turn it around. Meaning, Gavud Loitova, a person didn't sink. Kishur Tova, but wood has sunk to the bottom. Um, now, what's he trying to say exactly? Some learned that he was just trying to keep the Talmudim up. But what was really, what was Rav Dimi trying to say? And what was Rav Yosef trying to say? Abaya said to Rav Yosef that Rav Dimi mentioned that nobody's drowned in the sea of Yama Melach. He was saying like this It's posher that a plank, which never sinks in any sea. Meaning, Rav Yosef is not happy with Rav Dimi's statement. Because Rav Dimi is making it sound like a person never drowned, but, but other things drowned. It doesn't sound right. Because people drowned quicker than other things. So Rav Yosef was really saying, Gavahud tova, kshuru tova? But, but a kshuru did sink? So Abayah is saying, no, he didn't have to mention a kshuru, because a kshuru doesn't sink anywhere else. All, all the seeds of the, in the world, a kshuru, a beam, remains afloat. He's saying even a person that sinks all, uh, elsewhere in this sea, he won't sink. The Mainaf community, why do we have to know this? Why is it f- important for us to know that no one ever sank and that it's so salty? Kihadiravin. Because of the following story that happened with Ravin, have a shock of Azal Akhari, Rabbi Yirmiya, he was going along behind Rabbi Yirmiya, Aguda di Yamad Estoim, on the banks of the river of, st- of the ocean of Estoim, by the Yama Melach. Omar Leir of Yirmiya told him, Aulim Mimshay Mehani Miyat Mayel Shabbos. What's the halacha? Can a person wash himself from these waters on Shabbos? So the question was, is this water medicine? And medicines are also midera bonon. Omale, shapi, dom. You're allowed to do it. Why? Because no one thinks that you're really trying to get the medicinal value over here. It looks like you're washing yourself. So as long as it, it's not noticeable, we had this in Brachot, we had this elsewhere in Shabbat, you're allowed to do refuah if it's not noticeable. Like if it's in a food, right? We had food or drinks. So it doesn't look like you are trying to, to, to do a medicinal act. It's fine. Ma'ud the Are you allowed to open and close your eyes when you're washing? Does it look a little bit more noticeable? On my lay, Zulo Shamati, that I didn't hear. Kiyoyte Shamati, but I heard something. Similar to Amr Abzeira. Kri Abzeira said, What was the Meimatsu Miftach? The Meimatsu Miftach means close and sh- open shut, open shut. You're trying to, to, uh, to cure your eye. So, um, Open and shut them while you're putting it to your eye. So he said, I heard this. That I don't know, but I heard a similar thing. The Rabbi Zayra, the Zimna Amal Mishmei the Rav Masna, said that Rabbi Zayra would say it sometimes in the name of a Matna, the Zimna Amal Mishmei the Bar Ukva, and sometimes in the name of a Ukva, the Tavai Mishmei the Avu the Shmuel, the Levi Amen. 
and whether he said in the name of Rav Matna or Mar Ukva, he, he would always say that they, Rav Matna and Mar Ukva, said it, these two halachot, in the name of Avua de Shmuel, the father of Shmuel, and of Levi. Okay? One of them said it in one's name, and the other one said it in the other's name. And the halacha is, Chadam a yayim v'sericho ayin osir al gava ayin mutu, v'chadam a ruik tofi al fila gava ayin osir. One said, you now have to put wine inside your eye. Okay? Because, obviously you're doing something for medicine if you're putting wine in your eye. But on top of your eye, that's okay. Because, people might think that he's just using some liquid to clean something. People would do that. You know, they didn't have a sink. Every time you want to just get something off you, you don't just go to the sink. There is no sink. So it would take a little liquid to be able to rub off some stain or some, some food, whatever it was. So on top of the eye, that would make sense. That's washing. And so if you're really doing it for medicine purposes, you could do that. Because nobody could see. But if you put it right in, directly into your eye, for, for medicinal purposes, maybe because it was, had alcohol in it or whatever, they had an infection inside the eye, whatever it is. Today we have eye drops. Um, I bet you if you put some alcohol in your eye when you had it, uh, it, burn. it probably burnt them, but, uh, but they needed it, the alcohol. Infection, the Well, eye drops also burn sometimes, no? I don't know. I don't know. Sodium, maybe some sodium. Today, today we're a little more advanced. But those days, those were the eye drops, maybe. I don't know. So, that's what it looks like over here. That there was some sort of medicinal... The Chad Omar, the other one said, the If to put your saliva right over your eye, even over the eye, that's Asur. Now, Rok Tafel, Tafel means the guy didn't taste anything they ate that day. Raw saliva. Okay? And that's full of enzymes and, and, and all the saliva is full of, you know that? You know the saliva is full of uh, nutrients and everything. So that's what he's using. And they bring down that a fasting person's saliva contains a large quantity of potassium sul- sulfocyanide which has an antibacterial effect. Okay? Um, so that, even that is asur because it's clear that you're using it as a medicine. <coughs> and now it says, This time, the avud shmul hu da'omer yayim b'sricha ayin elser agavo ayin muter let us now determine that the one that said that line, that wine inside, but on top is mutar, but inside is asur, is the father of Shmuel. Me, the Omar Shmuel, since Shmuel himself, the son of Avodah Shmuel, said, Shoyer Adam Peter B'yayin. B'nois Nagav A'yim B'Shabbis. A person is allowed to soak his bread in wine and then put that over his eye on Shabbos. And people won't understand necessarily, people won't assume necessarily that he's in, involved in a medicinal act, okay, because the Rishonim say that it was dangerous to touch your eyes, which what they're saying right now with this corona, not to touch your eyes either, so with your hand. So the way the guy wants to wash his eye, or clear, he's, he's touching, he's really washing. He's not, he's not, he's not doing anything medicinal. So, but he doesn't want to touch his eye directly, so he puts the bread into the wine, and then he washes himself. So therefore you're allowed to do it, even if you're doing it for medicinal purposes. Isn't that considered a bizarre for the bread? Um, like about tashris? Yeah. But if you're using it for something. Not even not for this purpose? It's like a compress. Using it, you're using it. You're not, you're not wasting it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can't eat it anymore, but you're, I think you're getting a usage out of it. I don't know if it's baltashris. Baltashris means you just th- th- dump it into a cup of water for no reason, just to watch it. And that's what I think. Here, you're gaining, you're, you're using it, especially on Shabbat, where 
Now to put the... Well, right. So, the Gemara says, the Shmir Le'imimad, who did he hear this halacha from? Lab the Shmir Le'imimad, didn't he hear it from his father? So therefore, it must be that you see clearly that putting it on top of your eye is mutar and probably Shmuel heard this from his father. But according to you, So, the Shmuel Le'imimad. So, But Shmuel also said, Reik Tofel, Afilu Agava Ayin Osir. Who did he hear that from? If he heard it from his father, El Levi Velechad Omar, then Levi never said it. We know that Levi said one of them, El Echad Shmuel Levi Avua. So you have to say that Shmuel heard one from his father, El Echad Shmuel Levi Levi. The Gemara says, we know that Shmuel said the second halacha also. We know that Shmuel said the second halacha as well. So therefore, and we know that the father of Shmuel said one of those halachot that Shmuel said, and the other halacha that Shmuel said was said by Levi. So you really can't prove anymore which one was said by Avud Shmuel, which one was said by Levi. Omer Maruk Omer Shmuel. A person is a lot of soak. Kilirin um, on Erev Shabbos. Some sort of potion here for your eye. Rashi says, Luzia Belaz. Luzia. What's Luzia? They don't know. Some more of bandage or a paste that was put on top of the eye. Put it on top of your eyes. You don't have to worry that you did anything wrong. So, um, why? The reason is because the Chacham said the only way you can use this is if you start doing it on Erev Shabbat. So, therefore, um, you're not going to come to grind. That's the whole problem of medic- medicines is that you're going to come to grind. But since you have to start this um, on Erev Shabbat, so therefore he's going to be like, it's like pre-warned that this is not allowed to be done on Shabbat. He's not going to come to grind anything. What about putting it on your eye? Using medicines is a problem also. So the, the, the same thing. People are not going to think um, that he's using this as a Medicine, since it looked similar to wine, and therefore people put wine on top of their eyes many times to wash themselves. They would take like a strong thing, some wine, and wash off their... It was like a freshener, it was almost like an alcohol pad. You know, they give you on the airplane, those things. I don't know if they do it anymore. I was growing up, those hot towels, when you get to LA, when you land over there, but they had a little bit of alcohol, I don't know what it was. Like a lemonade. Yeah, it's so strong. It had a little bit of a, I don't know if it was alcohol or whatever, but this is what they did. You know, freshen yourself up with a little wine on top. Marukva saw that Baalivoy was closing and opening his eyes using this koiler. He said, that's not, that was, that's too much. Because when you cl- open and close your eyes while you're washing yourself, it looks clearly like you're trying to get it into your eye and um, and that Marshmul for sure did not allow. Sholach le Rabbiana le Marukva. Rabbiana sent this message to Marukva. Lishandalon Mara Mehanach Kilirin de Marshmul. Can you please send us some of these Kilirin of Marshmul? Marukva was the Av Bezdin in Shmuel's time. So he asked him if he could bring some back. So he sent him back. I'll send you. So you shouldn't say I'm stingy. But you should know that Shmuel said this. Whatever 
one drop of cold water in the eyes in the morning and washing your hands and feet in warm water at night is better than all the kilayin in the world. Okay? In order to get, get off all the sweat of the, of the feet and the hands at night, which are harmful to the eye, you wash them, it's better than all the kilayin. Tanya Rabbi Yochiyam, Rabbi Meinim, Mishum, Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Meinim, Mishum, Rabbi Yehuda, Toi B'Tipa, Tipa, Stoyin, Shachos, Rukhitz, Yudayim, Raglayim, Arvis, Mikol, Kol, Loyrin, Sheba, Oylam, the same thing, Who are your Oymer? And Rabbi Meinim would say, Yad, La'ayin, Tikotzeitz, A hand, that's put to the eye, should be cut off. Yad, La'chaitem, Tikotzeitz, A hand that's put to the nose, should also be cut off. Okay? What are the reasons for? So, the hand to the nose, Rashi says, is a noyach lishu tukatsu shuruch ro shayru ala yad, misam mosri. V'chein kula. So Rashi learns there's a bad spirit. Okay? And uh, there's a taste about it in Yuma, I think. It's called Basmelech, the spirit. You have to wash your hands three times to get rid of it. So it means if you touch your eye with your hand before you wash your hands, then it would have been better had your hand been cut off. This is all before you wash your hands. You put your hands by your nose also. Yad la pet tikotzit. And it, what it does is, it causes a very bad smell in your hand and your nose. Yad la oizin tikotzit. If you put it into your ears, a person can become deaf. Yad la chastuda tikotzit. If a person puts his hand on, on a chastuda. Chastuda is a, a wound. Yad la ama tikotzitz. And a hand that put by his brit should be cut off. And this is all because the poshup shat is because of, of, this, of this ruach ra that could harm him. On his wound, on his brit. Others say that it means you shouldn't touch his brit milah, so you shouldn't come to any surim. Yad lefita bat tikatzet, a person that puts his hand lepita bat, of where he relieves himself tikatzet, should also now over here. Now what's the problem? Because since that's a place that's not clean, he might come. Rashi says, Rashi learns, this, is, this has nothing to do with this um, Ruach Ra. This has to do with the fact that if a person touches himself in a place that's not clean, and then he'll end up touching other places that are sensitive, he can harm himself. Yad le gigit tikatzetz. If your hand touch, touches a barrel, Rashi says, which they put beer inside, his hand should be cut off. These are all hands when waking up without the washing. Ah, all of them besides putting a hand in a place where a person relieves himself. That, that means the opposite. That means that if you touch that any time of the day, even if already you wash your hands, make sure that you wash again, right, before you touch anything else. Um, now the last one is again back to the Ruach Ra. If you touch a beer barrel in the morning before you wash your hands then what's going to happen is that the Ruach Ra is going to go into the beer and anybody who drinks from it is going to get harmed. Could get harmed. Okay. And this means all types of foods as well. Don't touch them before you wash your hands. Yad mistamei. Why shouldn't you touch all these things? Now the bright explains. The hand touching the eye can blind it. Yad mechareshet. 
the hand could cause a person to become deaf. Yad ma'ale polipus. The hand could bring up a polipus. Polipus. If it touches the mouth or the nose. What's polipus? Rashi says, reyach achoytem v'apeh. And then Rashi says, the next one, Rashi says, Yad Amo is only because of Keri. He might come to a, um, an Isser of Keri. Okay, Tanya, we'll do it in the bright, Rabbi Natan Omer, Bat Chorinizu. This Ruach Ra is free. Umak Pedet Ache Yichotzi Adav Shalosh Pe'amim. Which means, it's very, very respected. Haruach Asher Adam Lefnei Netila. And therefore, it's a very powerful Ruach Ra, and it's Makpid, it's very particular, consistent, that the person must wash his hands three times. Okay? And he has to wash them well. Omer of Yechon, Puch Mavi Bat Melech. Puch can remove Bat Melech. Bat Melech is the name of this this Ruach Ra. And what's Puch? Puch, Rashi says, doesn't say what it is. They say it means it's some sort of mascara. What? Puch, yeah. Exactly. Posek et adima, umar beseor, ba'afapayim. But it's going to make a lot of hair grow on the eyelid, which means the eyelashes. Yeah, the Puch. Tanya nam yoch, Reb Yoisi Oimer, I think I forgot to say it stops the tears before we said that too. And it grow, you grow a lot of eyelashes. What's Alin? Alin is the name of an Asev, Rashi says, or an herb. Or any leaves of any plant. Because barata is coriander. Coriander is what we call, I think, uh, cilantro. Right? There's no refuah. Amr Av Sheshet, Kshut Eim Behem Mishum Befuah. Haps have no effect in healing your eyes. So all these things, Kshut is haps, that they make beer out of. So the point of these things is that you let to eat them. Others learn, others learn you let to put them straight on the eye because there's no medicinal effect there's no curative measures here. Okay. Omar Rabbi Yosef, because Barat HaFilu Didi Koshali. Rabbi Yosef said, even for me, even though I'm blind, Rabbi Yosef was blind, putting this, because Barat on me, eat, or eating the because Barat, if I had an eye ache, would hurt me. Omar Rabbi Yosef said, Gagira HaFilu Didi Mali. Gagira is good even for me. Rabbi Yosef was also blind. But eating gargira, what is gargira? Urugo. Uruga. What's uruga? Some sort of plant. So this plant is good even for me. So, is this Shabbat? Is he, is he talking about Shabbat or is he talking about just in general? It's not clear in the Rishonim. Rashi doesn't mention anything about Shabbat. The Omar Ma'ukva Omar Shmuel Kominik Shut Shru. All types of hops can be eaten on Shabbat because healthy people also eat them, even if you're doing it for medicinal purposes. Levami Truza. The Truza one is, uh, was only eaten for medicine. People that eat, see you eat Truza, it's like you're taking Advil. It doesn't look different than, right? So it's clearly that you're doing it for medicine. Omar Avchizda. Shri Kutav Yashri. Pi'ufe Bey Osir. If a person wants to coat the roast in oil and eggs, you let it do it after Shabbos begins. Now, why wouldn't you be able to do it? Because you might think that it's makabe patish or mesakein. Because that's the way the roast becomes okay. But 
Um, but it's mutter. It's not a problem. You're allowed to do it right even after Shabbos begins. Pi'ufe be'i osir. But whisking eggs is osir. Why? Because it looks like you're about to fry the eggs. You're, you know, you're, you're scrambling your eggs. The bisud is the iri of the lelchia barashi. The wife of the iri made this type of roast for the lelchia barashi. And the lelchia barashi was a Talmud of the iri. On Shabbos, he didn't want to eat it. <coughs> so she said to him, <laughs> For your Rebbe, my husband, Ziri, I made it and he ate it. But you're too choshev, you can't eat it? So the answer is, says the Gemara, the Iri Tamei, the Omaz Iri Noisen Odem Yain Salumayim Slulin, the Toicham Mishameres Bishabos, the Enoi Choyshesh, the Iri holds that you'll have to put clear wine or water into a strainer on Shabbos. And you don't have to worry that you're over on anything. Alma, so you see that Raziri holds, given the Mishtati Hachi, since the water and the wine are tzolul, they're clear, and they're able to be drunk in the status that they're in, the state that they're in. So, love me the COVID. There's nothing really significant that you did by throwing them in through, through the, by pouring them through the strainer. So hachanami kivan demis ochel hachi love midi kavit. So here too, when you put all this nice new coating of of eggs or oil on top of the roast, okay, you're adding to it, but that's not really makav patish or mitaken, because you're able to eat the roast without it. So we don't see any significant act being done over here, right? Therefore. But, but his Talmud, Chia Barashi, must have held that you're not allowed to put Yayin Salul and Mayin Salul through the strainer on Shabbat. Because even though you, it's very clean water, but at the end of the day, there's something, there's something that you're doing now. You're straining it even more. And therefore, here too, there would be an Easter as well to, uh, to, to, to coat this roast with this, um, with this coating. The Omer Mar Ukva, Misha Nikva Yodu Yeragli. Same to be Yayin. The Eni Cheshesh. Here you see exactly. Someone that banged his hand or foot. What do you do in the olden days? Tzayim Sabi Ayin. You can reduce the swelling. You put it into, water, into wine. The Eni Cheshesh. You don't have to worry at all. And why? Why? <laughs> because it's not real medicine. You know why? Because it doesn't work so well. So if you let it do it. Um... What about vinegar? Could you put your could you put your hand that got banged up or your foot into the vinegar? Because that's stronger than wine. They said chala with an aleph, which is vinegar, you're not allowed to do it. The people of Bnei Mechuzah, we, kept, we said this a few times in Shabbat, they were wealthy and they were spoiled, they were more finicky and sensitive. They, they're so sensitive that even wine, which is not as strong as vinegar, can heal them. Therefore, they're not allowed to apply wine to a wound on Shabbat. Depends on what you would like. Meaning, it depends on what type of person you like. If your skin is very sensitive, then you can't do something that's curative for it. Okay? Ravina Iklav Beiler Vashi. Ravina visited the house of Rav Ashi. The great two, Ravina and Rav Ashi, they wrote the Gemara to get, right? He once visited him. And he saw that Rav Ashi had an injury on his foot, that a donkey stepped on him. And Rav Ashi was sitting on Shabbos, and he was uh, soaking it with vinegar. Doesn't the master hold of what Rav Hillel taught that you're not allowed to use vinegar? On the top of the hand, or on the top of the foot, that's different. Why is that different? Because that is mamish it is a, a, a sakonas nefashos. Since it's a kanat nefashot, 
That's not, that's not over here, on the bottom of the hand. That's the top of the hand. That's the kanot nefashot, and you have to take care of it. Ika the Amri, others say what happened was like this. Chazid the he was actually saw that he was using wine. Don't you know what Rava said that the people of the Mechuzah, since they're so sensitive, it's Osir, and you're also a very sensitive person. He knew that Ravashi was. So for you, wine should be Asur as well. Omale Gaviyad the Gavaregel Shani. The Omer Ravad the Ramas, the Omer Rav Gaviyad the Gavaregel. Harein Kimako Shacholol. They're like getting an internal wound. And therefore you're allowed to mechal Shabbos for them. There's no issues. <coughs> okay. Okay. So Ton Rabon on Rich to me grow, be me hamson, be me asium. A person is allowed to wash himself in the waters of Geror, in the waters of Hamson, in the waters of Asio, Uve May Tveria, in the waters of Tveria. Why? Because even though they're very, very I don't know, very, very, but they, they're, they have, they're therapeutic, they have curative measures, you're allowed to do it because normal people also bathe in them, healthy people also go into it. Okay? Avaloi biyam ha-gadol, but not in the giam ha-gadol. What is the yam ha-gadol? Either the Mediterranean, okay, or the other oceans. So, why are you not allowed to do that? The Lebe Meim we'll see in a second. And not in water that was used for soaking flax. Because obviously it's so, it's pretty repulsive. So obviously if a person sees you, you're obviously getting some sort of medicinal value out of that. The Lebe Yama Shul Stoim, and not in Yam HaMelech. Because, why would you be going to the Yam HaMelech? Obviously because of its health reasons. Um... Now, before we said that you're allowed to wash with water from the Yamamelech, that was talking about water that came out of the Yamamelech already, before. But to go inside the Yamamelech is a problem. The Remiru, so the Gemara asked the Kashu. It's from another Brite, it says, You're allowed to go into the Yamagadol, this Brite says, But not into the soaking water of the flax. So Kashu, Yamagadol, Yamagadol, one Bryce says, Yamagadol is Asu. One says, it's Mutar. Omer Rabbi Yoichan, Omer Rabbi Yoichan says, Likashem. Horeb Meir. Horeb Rabbi Yehuda. I just had a chazanish on the surah. This is very gishmak here. So, call, why? What's the machlek? Is it tan? Kol ayame ki mikve, shenem alu mikve amayim kore yamim, tibre Rabbi Meir. Because, Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Meir says, that all the oceans, are like a mikveh. Okay? And they have alochas like a mikveh, you're able to purify yourself in them. As it says, to the gatherings of the waters, to the, and he calls them, he called them oceans, seas. So the seas, the oceans of the world, were called ule mikveh hamayim, gatherings, mikveh, they're called mikveh in the pasuk. Yehuda omer, yam agadol ki mikveh, v'lo nemer yamim elo, sheyeshwe minim yamim harbe. The great sea, which is either the Mediterranean or the Atlantic, whatever it is, um, those, that is like a mikveh. So why does it say, Koroyamim, he called to the seas, which is plural, it sounds like all of them. It just means, it says seas because in the Mediterranean, it contains many different seas inside of it. Okay? Many waters flow into, into, into it. Okay. But really, they don't have a halacha of 
all the other oceans don't have a halacha of a mikveh. Now, according to Rabbi Yehuda, um, you can't toivel inside any ocean unless it's the Yamagadl. Rabbi Yosi, I may call Yam Mitar and Bezoichlin. All the oceans are mitar even when they're flowing. Because we know that the halacha is that a mikveh can only be mitar when it's gathered and it's not moving away. And the only thing that can be mitaher, a person, when it is moving, when it's while it's flowing, is a, 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 a live spring that emanates from itself, from its deep... So Rabbi Yosef is saying that's what oceans have. Oceans have their own wellsprings. But they're still going to be possible for Zavim and for Mitzrayim because they need Mayim Chayim because they're not Mayim Chayim. Mayim Chayim means living waters. What? No, from a mikveh? Where does Maim Chaim come from? Maim Chaim, Chaim, Chaim means a spring that is continuous, that keeps, that keeps flowing out new water. That's what he's saying it does have. So he says, no, but it's, no, no. It's, it's okay as a Mayim, but not Maim Chaim, because that's why he says, There are three people that need Maim Chaim, not just a Mayim. A Mayim could stop once in a while. But this is Mayim Chaim means it has to be continuous. Kadesh Behem Mechatos means for the Parah Duma waters, for the Zavim, not a Zava, a man Zav and a Mitzayra. So. So seas are not then or they are? So now where did Rabbi get this? So you have wellsprings, so why aren't you Mayim Chaim as well? So the answer is because the Torah called them a mikveh. But, the ter- but we know that they also have a mayon. So what the Torah is doing is like this. It's saying like this. You have certain properties that you're like a mikveh. You're going to be possible for Zov and Mitzurayim and Mikadosh Mechatos. You're not going to be called Mayim Chaim. But on the other hand, you'll be like a mayon, like a spring, in regards that you could purify while you're moving. Yes, what? What did you say? So seas are uh, included or not? According to Yoisi, yes, they are included. And they're even, they work even better than a mikveh. Because they can be moving. Okay? Um, they can be flowing and moving, and you can still become Tahor. So, okay. So, therefore, the first Brighter that said that you're not allowed to go into the Yamagadol is going according to Rabbi Meir. And therefore, what? That's why you're not allowed to go into the Yamagadol. Um, what did the first bride to say? The first bride to said. In the first brighter? The second brighter said, the Gemara brought another brighter. That said that you could go into Yamagadol. So Rabbi Yechelen said, Lo Kasha, Ha Rabbi Meir, Ha Rabbi Yehuda. Meaning, according to Rabbi Yehuda, what? According to Rabbi Meir, that says all oceans have a din of, of a mikveh. Then what?
Yeah. According to the mayor, all oceans are one, one and the same. All oceans have a din of a mikveh. So just like you're going to go into Mechamo, Mechamos, Megror, Mechveria, Mechasia, so you're to go into Yamagodl also. But according to Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Yehuda is going to be Mechalek between the Yamagodl and all the other ones. So therefore, even though he's allowing you to go into all the other ones, but maybe Rabbi Yehuda holds that the Yamagodl, since the Yamagodl is different, and the Yamagodl is not going to be considered a mikveh, obviously it's probably based on a difference in its mitzis. That the Yamagodl is way too salty. And that's why Rabbi Yehuda holds that the Pasuk is referring to specifically the Yamagodl is Kimikveh, but the other ones are not. Aha. Uh-huh. Now, w- w- what does the Yehuda hold about this? That the Pasuk called Mikveh only to Yamagodl, right? So why did it say Yamim? Because in the Yamagodl, many oceans flow into it. So, Tosis really is bothered by what we're bothered by. What does this Machlekes have anything to do with medicinal purposes? What does it have anything to do with anything? So they want to bring down over here that The obviously of Yehuda holds that the Yama Godel is even saltier. So therefore, since you see in Rabbi Yehuda's world, it's not clear to me exactly, that Rabbi Yehuda holds that the Yama Godel is different than all the other Yamim, so that's why it would make sense to say that Rabbi Huda is the one that said in the Brayta that differentiated between the Yamagodol and all the other types of waters. Now, what is the Shaykhis exactly? It's not clear. Um, they struggle with it, the Achorinim, exactly. Toysus asked it. He says, Tim, look at the bottom Toysus. Hechem idami ha plukta le plukta del de So there has to be a pshat, obviously. But it's not such a clear pshat. But one thing we do see clearly is that Rabbi Huda holds that Yamagodol is different and all the, all the Yam, and that's what the second Bryce also did. It differentiated between Yamagodal and everything else. Maskif Lord of Nachba Yitzchak, Nachba Yitzchak asked the Kasha. Eimur depligi the Inyan Tumah V'Tahara. The Inyan Shabbos Mi Shabbos Lu. This seems to be Taisa's Kasha, but um, the Gemara is, what was the Havmi of the Gemara? That's what Taisa's asking. Taisa's asking what the Havmi of the Gemara was. Nachba Yitzchak is saying, um, it's nothing to do with salt which one is very salty but which is what Shabbos is about Shabbos is about which one is too salty and therefore it's all, only medicine it has to do with Tum and Tara so you don't you don't know anything about Shabbat Elo Amr Abnach by Yitzchak Lekasher Hod Ishtohi Hod Lo Ishtohi the price that says you're allowed to go in is if you don't remain there for too long okay um, the, the other one is talking about going in for too long. The Maya came to the Basra, it says the Gemara, the Loi Shtoi. I the Loi Shtoi, I feel the Mimim Shunami. In the second Brighter that says, that what? That you're not allowed, that you're allowed to go in, is because you didn't stay there for too long. Then I feel the Mimim Shunami. And you should be able to bathe in the dirty water that you soaked flax in. That you're allowed to wash yourself in the waters of Tveria or Mishra or Yamal Shel Stoim. Even though you have sores on your head. And therefore, they definitely need some sort of medicine. And what are we talking about? We're talking about 
when you didn't remain there for too long. But if you stay there for too long, then it's going to be Asr. Because this Bryce is what? This Bryce clearly says, Shaloy Nishtao. Avon Nishtao Osir. And we just said that the second Bryce that said that you're allowed to stay there is the Loy Yishtai. So why would the second Bryce say, what did the second Bryce say? That you're not allowed to go in to May Mishra at all. But this Braisa clearly says that you could go into May Mishra as long as you're not Nishtah, as long as you don't stay for a long time. Elo, Yamagadu, Yamagadu, Lekasha, Hobi Yofen, Sheboi, Hobi Roim, Sheboi. So therefore you cannot interpret the two Braithas in the way we did, that one is talking about you stayed there for a while, and the other one, you didn't linger there at all. Rather, the, the answer to the Braithas are like this. Be Yofen, Sheboi. To the good waters of the great sea, Hobiraim Shibai. To the bad waters of the Yamagodl. Okay? If you're going into the good waters, so everybody knows you're going to the good waters, you, you go there during the week as well. So no one realizes that you're going there for a cure. But if they're contaminated, so why are you going in there? Both brightness are talking about that you stay there for a while. Okay? And if you're going there for a minute, you can go into anything. But to stay there for a while is a problem if you go into the waters that are royim, because people say, why is he going into that water? Must be he's, he really needs it. So the Gemara says, May Mishra, Ame Mishra, Nami Kasho. And the Kasho between the first two brights that said that you're not allowed to soak yourself in May Mishra. And the last bright that we just brought said that you could go when it's Loi Ishtoi. The answer is, Hadi Ishtoi, Hadi Loi Ishtoi. The first two brights were talking about that you stay there for a long time. That's why you're not allowed to go into May Mishra. The last Brighter clearly said, that you, you didn't stay there for a long time, so it's going to be Mutar. Um, uh, maybe we should just learn the Mishnah. Yeah? You have to run? No. Okay, you know what? Okay, we'll stop here. Anybody... Uh,